Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to talk about celebrations. So yes, we're going to celebrate the 4th, and one of the, actually the most amazing thing in Burlington on the 4th of July is the 4th of July Parade. So we're gonna find out more information about that. But before we begin, I want to mention that you can um, email, email me at the show anytime if you have a suggestion for a future topic or if you have a question for our guest might not be able to uh, get it to us in time you can always email talk at bcattv.org i would like to thank the crew for this evening we have john vias who's one of the staff members here making sure all of us volunteers make sure everything runs smoothly and we know where the fire extinguisher is oh just just kidding john um we also have some wonderful volunteers. Uh, Christina Nikitas has given up her Wednesday evening, although tonight's Thursday, um, had a little scheduling issue, um, but thank you, Christina. We also have Kyle Wilson, Joseph Blake, and Evan McNamee, who have also given up their evening to come to BCAT to um, have fun behind the scenes as well as celebrate the fort. So before we, Actually, I think that's, oh wait, I have to say thank you for my husband Paul for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Um, although Daddy Date Night's kind of going away. I started that 10 years ago and the kids don't need Daddy's dates anymore. Um, okay, breathe. I'd like to introduce my wonderful guest for this evening who I think you might recognize, Nick Priest, who is the parade committee chairperson. Co-chair. For yeah. the, co-chair, okay, sorry. No, it's fine. Did not mean any disrespect to your <laughs> other co-chair um, of the Fourth of Burlington's Fourth of July Parade. Yes. Cool. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And uh, I always look forward to the parade. As do I. So, well, before we get into the parade itself, um, I always like to learn more about my guest and have my audience learn a little bit more about the guest, yeah. which is you. Um, <laughs> So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you grew up, how you came to Burlington, and why did you decide you wanted to get involved in the parade? Yeah. Um, I am from Burlington. Cool. Uh, so you didn't have to travel Didn't have to far. go very far at all. <laughs> uh, so I've been here my entire life. Excellent. Uh, went away for a couple of years to college, and uh, a couple of years after that, and then came back. My wife and I uh, moved back together, uh, bought a home in uh, 2011, okay. I've been here ever since, raising our four kids. Excellent. Um, you know, we, we great place to grow up. It is a great place to grow <laughs> up. It's a great place to grow up. It's a great place to raise kids. Um, you know, we love being here, and uh, you know, I I found myself uh, wanting, right? You know, so uh, the Fourth of July parade was quite a thing back in the day. Uh, I have very fond memories of it. Excellent. And, um, you know, uh, Mike Runyon, who's the other co-chair. Okay. And has been running the parade now for, I feel like, almost a decade. Um, Probably. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. He, uh, uh, maybe about four or five years ago, was calling for volunteers. Okay. Looking for help. And so I said, how can I help? And I started <laughs> volunteering, uh, doing that. And then next thing I know, I'm co-chair. And we are running this thing straight from point A to point B. Awesome, like we do every awesome. Year. So it's very cool. Well, I'm glad you stepped up Thank and you. said, sign me up. Yeah. So what does, you know, um, how was the committee formed? Who's on the committee? What does the committee do? I know it's a lot of questions, but let's start out with <laughs> how big is the committee? Committees are right now uh, a handful of folks. Um, you know, we we've, we have been running uh, as technically a part of uh, the American Legion, uh, who oh. was our sponsor, okay. uh, our, our primary sponsor. Okay, you're saying was, does that mean? They still are. Oh, okay. They still are. Uh, <laughs> Scared me there meaning, for a second. Meaning that they, they support us, uh, you know, uh, as, as a committee and, 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 you know, kept us grounded. Okay. Uh, we just last year became our own 501c3. Oh. Oh, cool. So we are now officially a, a nonprofit status. Um, we are we are just residents, right? I think that's important to know is that the the town helps sponsor the parade, okay? Right? Uh, but the residents run the parade, 
And so that's a, that's a clear distinction. When, you, when, people, when, when they hear committee, they automatically assume that it's a town-run thing. Yeah, no. That it is not. <laughs> it is no. Not. Uh, and so we have, you know, Mike Runyon and myself, uh, Christine Kim, who's our treasurer, uh, Jeff DeBona uh, helps out, uh, John LaFauci from uh, Bill Ricca, actually, uh, oh, has wow. recently helped joined and helped the, uh, the, the, the parade out, uh, Brenda Rappaport, uh, who's on the planning board, also, uh, you know, comes and lends a hand. Um, and then, you know, folks just support, you know, throughout mm -hmm. the year, um, you know, helping us out, you know, with, with a variety of different tasks uh, that need to get done. So um, it's, it's, you know, a handful of folks strong. Uh, and like anything else, you know, it comes to volunteering. Right. I always encourage folks, um, even if you're away on the 4th, you have a long I was going to ask that. You know, yeah. if you're not physically there on the 4th like you okay. always have family plans yeah you know folks folks you know in the last couple of years as I've been asking for volunteers they're like oh gosh I'd love to help I'm, I'm away you know uh, during the 4th we, we all see on standing family tradition we go away so that's great it's the planning takes place before the day of uh, well you so, don't just so wake up one morning and say I think I'm gonna have a parade <laughs> no. so I, when I do you start when, when do you start planning honestly we we start planning July 5th. 5th. <laughs> we really <laughs> Why did do. I know you were going to say that? Uh, and, and the reason that we do is because it is uh, important for us to lock down the participants, the performers that we have. Um, <laughs> you can't leave the parade <laughs> route until you sign next yeah, year's contract. You know, and we, and we have them pencil us in, you know, so that we can wow. okay. have those conversations. I mean, you know, folks like the Aleppo Shriners, yeah. uh, you know, they are a very hot commodity, right? Uh, Absolutely. And there are other, you know, bands and performers that, you know, um, have to be, uh, you know, negotiated with as soon as possible. Right. Um, okay. You know, all of the all of the real work, all of the heavy work, really truly starts uh, in terms of like coordinating the parade mm -hmm. in January. Okay. And so from January to July, it's all about making sure that our participants, especially the ones who are you know, just coming because they want to be in the parade. Our classic cars, or <laughs> me. Our, yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> the show, right. I mean, yeah. you're, okay. you know, you're on the on that email chain, right? And I think that went out in February of this I year. I think so. Right. Um, and so we try to get everyone early to put the bug in everyone's ear. Okay. Right. And then you know, the closer we get, the more aggressive my emails become. <laughs> <laughs> we and know where you live. No, <laughs> and no. we try and try and coordinate all that. And at the same time. Uh, we have members who are reaching out to our sponsors, right? We're looking for new sponsors. Okay. Um, and we are trying to raise the funds. So what are you looking for in a sponsor? Uh, they have to have a pulse. That well, usually that, helps. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> we, we... Upright, <laughs> breathing. <laughs> no, um, that person's no, moving. No, that, that's for Come the here. committee. Right, <laughs> yeah. <I'm laughs> <Sorry. always> <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week. I understand. Um, no, s sponsorships, you know, uh, come in all, all types, right? Okay. So, um, you know, when we talk about sponsors, it's different than your stock standard donations, right? So how okay. I classify, you know, a donation is a resident or an individual contributing to the parade, okay. right? Um, you so know, like, here's a hundred bucks. Here, right, here's okay. some cash. If we don't use cash, here's a check. What's a check? Uh, we just recently got Venmo. Um, and so now we can, you know, accept funds that way, which is fantastic. Wow, technology. Uh, it's amazing, yeah. you know. Uh, but we, we found, you know, a couple, it was right before the pandemic, we uh, did some, like, light up stuff uh, on the common before the fireworks. Yeah. And they were a hit. And not only were they a hit, but folks were like, how much? And we'd say how much, it was like a dollar for a thing. And they were like, here's a 20, keep the change. Wow. Right, so people okay. were very giving in the moment, right? So we said to ourselves, well... Yeah, but January, they kind of forget. Folks don't want to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, but if we have the, the access, right, because we don't have cash on us all the time, right. um, we want to make sure we have access. Um, so, so back to the whole sponsorship. You know, sponsors come in all types. Uh, corporate sponsors are obviously, you know, our, um, our lifeblood in a way. Uh, big and small, it doesn't matter, okay. right? Every, every bit counts. And you know when they contribute, uh, you know we have um, sponsorship levels. Okay. And so folks, you know, can contribute a anywhere from two hundred and fifty dollars, all the way up to whatever they'd like. 
Okay. Um, and you know, like 250 gets you on our website and gets you a mention. Uh, you okay. know, and then beyond that, you get to be on a banner in the parade. And the more you donate, the bigger your logo gets. Ah, and you okay. know, there's th then there's social media involvement, and you know, all those kinds of things that really okay. expand the package for that uh, incentive, right? Okay. I mean, really, you know, uh, these these corporations, these these community, you know, partners that we have here in town, uh, they're giving because they're a part of the community, right? And and that really means a lot to us. Um, and then, of course, the town is mm -hmm. is a huge sponsor. Um, I mentioned the American Legion, uh, but you know I want to make sure I mention the town. Um, you know we we request uh, dollars through town meeting every May during budget season. Okay. Um, you know, and and town meeting uh, is very kind. Now, with, with town meeting, um, and the town sponsoring part of the parade. Mm -hmm. Has it always been that, or did that take place? Because I remember during the pandemic, um, a lot of businesses were barely holding on. Mm -hmm. So the parade committee did not want to go to those businesses, especially the small businesses, and ask for money. Yes. So in that particular case, I do remember um, some discussion about the town sponsoring the parade. Mm -hmm. Now, was that new because of COVID or had they sponsored before? So or had, yeah, I can only go so then? far back in, in, in time to, to recollect, like, I don't remember who ran the parade when I was a kid. Right, no, right. no, I'm just saying, you know, uh, but like, let's you know, say recently. 2019 versus Absolutely. 2022. So the town has always requisitioned dollars for us uh, before the pandemic, it was smaller. Okay. Um, and then we were we didn't do the parade for a year. It was because twenty twenty was twenty twenty we did not completely out, and twenty twenty one was the, the rolling, rolling rally. rally. Yes. So when we did the rolling rally, yes. Um, I feel like we did that with almost no dollars. Okay. Um, because again, we didn't want to. Uh, we, we heard from certain sponsors and, and they you know, okay. expressed their concern and we, can, we can heard them loud and clear and we completely understood. Uh, but I, I, so I, I think we did that with, uh, with, with mostly our, the, the dollars we kind of had in our kitty. Okay. Um, and you know, I could be wrong, so you yeah. know, someone feel free to We're not going to quote you on uh. it. You know, it's just, <laughs> I'm just wondering how, how big a role did the town play so in, versus before uh, versus after? And if you know, I, yes, I absolutely do. I'm I'm the Jamoke who gets to stand up and ask Tommy for the money. <laughs> uh, okay. In in 22, we asked them for double what we normally ask. Okay. Because we knew that it was going to be hard getting back. Okay. And that's I, probably what I'm remembering. I promised on town meeting floor that this year I wouldn't ask for that much again. Okay. So this year we asked for, for 27 cents left. <laughs> Absolutely. No, uh, <laughs> no we, we we cut it back in half. Okay. Um, Which is what it, I think what it was uh, anyway. M more or less. Okay. Um, and then um, so there there was actually money left over from last year in that fund. Oh. And so Ways and Means and Town Meeting agreed to al allow us to keep that open and available. Okay. As well as get the extra twenty. Okay. So we had. A, a, a little, little bit of flexibility. A little buffer heading uh, into, okay. into this parade, which was fantastic. Uh, because again, every year we're trying to bolster the parade a well, little yeah. bit more, right? We Where can we add? Where can we flex? You know, can, w what else can we contribute, um, you know, to make it a little bit longer, a little bit more fun? Okay. I remember way back when, mm -hmm. um, I think right after the parade was brought back to life because it kind of went away for a little bit. Yes. Um, and Mike came on the show and I think at that time we had discussed that a lot of people are like, why does the parade need money? What do you guys need money for? You know, because you get, you know, volunteers to drive in their pickup trucks or, you know, local organizations to put their own floats together. Mm -hmm. What does the money go for? That's a, that's a fantastic question. I wish we had more local organizations putting floats together. Um, you know, we, we could talk about volunteerism all day. Yes, we could. And um, that's not limited to the parade committee. <laughs> that's Trust not, me. Absolutely not. <laughs> as, as chair of the select board, I, I spent the last year talking about the need for volunteers and engagement. 
okay. and how critical it is as a, as a civic duty. Um, you know, but just like for volunteer organizations. Oh, like absolutely. It's how things get done, right? Right. People have to volunteer for it. <laughs> it's kind of in the name. You're um, either volunteered or you're voluntold. Right. And no, no. one likes to be voluntold. No. Um, no, so, you know, um, the, the money primarily goes right back into the parade for the performers, right? Okay. So when you see the Patriots yeah, like the Shriners are probably not going to come out of the goodness of their hearts. It, well, I mean, don't, again, don't get me wrong. They're, people they're people yeah. do have it in the right place in their hearts, right? <coughs> um, no, but I yes, realize. They're it, very, very nice people. Things, but things cost money. Exactly. Right? So we have to, right, we have to recognize that. Uh, so, yes, the Shriners, the Patriots cheerleaders, uh, you know, when other bands and performances mm -hmm. come, uh, the last number of years we've had the stilt walkers and the hula hoopers, oh, right? Yeah. Everyone loves seeing them, right? Um, again, these are folks coming, putting on a show in the parade, right? That right. costs money. So, sure, when it's you know their livelihood, right. or yeah. So when okay. when something they talk about, and be cats in the parade, mm -hmm. we don't charge you to be in the parade, but we also Thank don't you. pay you to be right. in the parade, right? Um, whereas when we're having like these larger performances, there are dollars tied to that so okay. the money goes to that primarily okay. and then we've got things like you know the police details okay. and you know um, we've got you know certain uh, you know uh, gas and you know uh, uh, ancillary things right the the lanyards and the go-kart that goes from yeah one, yeah everything goes right back into the parade. safety so and first aid and all that kind of stuff yeah okay. yeah so it's all the, all the money that we raise just gets turned around, put right back into the okay. parade. Which is kind of the premise of a nonprofit, yeah. a 501c3. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I have a lot of questions. So I'm trying away. to figure out which one to go first. I'm, I'm here at your disposal. Um, what are some of the things, oh, actually, we were talking about the need for volunteers. Yes. Even though the parade, you know, we're in mid-June right now, is it too late to volunteer? It's never too late to volunteer. It's never too late to volunteer. It's it's not a bad thing if you say you can only volunteer in the month of March, right? Okay. It's not a bad thing if you said you wanted to volunteer, but you could only help with uh, you know a, a fundraiser, right? Or you could only do X, or you could only do Y. You can tell us what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, we we are flexible and we are understanding. Right, everyone is busy. Right. You know, you don't have to tell me that. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah. we, we completely understand that people have restrictions. Right. Uh, the point is that we work together. Right. To make the parade the best it can be for the residents of Burlington. Right. So if you had ten volunteers each volunteering one hour, that's ten hours that you get back in your life. Yeah. Well, I mean. I think of it this way: it's ten hours more that the parade gets, okay, right? Um, that then makes the parade that much stronger, right? Um, I I commit my time; mm -hmm. that's already baked into how we do things currently. Okay. So anything extra is it's more bonus. we can do, right? It's, it's like frosting on the cake. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, okay. so so this year, for example, okay, we weren't able to do a fundraiser. Right? Okay. In past years, we would do a singular focus fundraiser for, you know, folks to come out and you know, uh, and mm -hmm. donate while you know we uh, prepare for the parade. We didn't have the resources to do that this year. Okay. If I had ten people giving me an hour each, I could have probably pulled that off. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, people don't have to give all of their time right right or you know it's like well is it is it five hours a week how much time it's as much time as you're able to do okay as long as we meet the required deadlines that we are in milestones that we are trying to achieve okay and that's all mapped out and it's like okay this has to be done you want to help that's right okay i love it yeah. what's some of the feedback that you heard from last year's parade that is impacting the plans for this year good or bad you know, I mean, folks, folks love the parade. Yeah. Right, and especially when it's nice weather. <laughs> Which it was last year. It was. Yeah. It was gorgeous last year. We've been very lucky the last few years. Yes. To have very, very nice weather. 
Um, the rolling rally was the rolling rally was, was questionable, but it wasn't raining, so I count that as good. Okay. Uh, as long as it's not raining, hailing, sleeting, or a hurricane. Or snowing. Right. And we're yeah, and it's we're, the big one. You know, I think that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. It's yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's you know, folks. Folks love the parade. I think um, you know sometimes folks uh, you know don't have the right uh, pacing in the parade. And mm -hmm. so there can be gaps that we have to adjust right. for. I think that, you know, um, sometimes if we're all moving a little too fast, the parade feels rushed fast. or it yeah. feels fast. Like, well, that was over quick, right? <laughs> um, was it was it And those shorter? of us walking are like. Yeah, right. And yeah, we're, we're, we're <laughs> huffing it, right? And, and, and folks, you know, on the, on the sidewalks are going, was it, was it shorter this year? I blinked. You know, yeah. I felt like it was shorter this year. Uh, and no, it, it, it wasn't, right? How do you control the pace, though? Like, not you specifically, but you as the overall parade. Yeah. How is that controlled? You kind of have to have a couple pacers throughout the parade. Oh. Okay. Right? Um, so organizing how the parade lineup is, mm. is, is a bit of an art, right? Yeah. Um, you have to account for who's in front and behind of who. Okay. You have to account for how fast or slow they might be moving. Okay. Right? And you also have to account for your performers and your musical numbers because you yeah, don't, you don't want, want them too bands. close together, yeah. right? If I had two bands smack dab on top of each other, no one would enjoy that. Right. Right? Um, you know, you have to have, you know, that, that filler between so folks, you know, can experience some music, it moves on, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We're clapping, we're laughing, we're having a good time. Okay. Oh look, there's some more music coming. It comes, Yay. right? I mean, those are the kinds of things. Okay. Um, you know, we we don't necessarily have um, stopping points, right? Larger okay. parades will actually say, like, okay, you know, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You exactly. stop at the viewing stand and you have like, you know, exactly, right? The so we don't we don't have you know a viewing stand. We don't you know have have any of that. So the parade isn't stopping you know, for anything other than, uh, you know, the pacing of okay. the, the people in it. Okay. So what's the parade, how is the parade route determined? The you know, parade route has, has been, and probably shall always be. Uh, flat. Flat. Yes. The, yes, the flatter okay. the better. Um, it's, it's, you know, topographically annoying uh, <laughs> that we, you know, can't get up to the common easily, right? Um, yeah. You know, we start the parade at the Presbyterian Church, mm -hmm. um, you know, on uh, 3A and- yep, Cambridge and Wilmington. Road. Cambridge, yes. at, at Cambridge and Wynn, we, we divert onto Wynn mm -hmm. and we take it right down to Memorial. Um, and that's where, you know, folks can either, if they're heading off to another parade, they right? Just they get just right, yeah. keep okay. on going. Never uh, thought of that. You know, and it, it's, it's by design. Okay. Right? Uh, you know, if if we were if we weren't as topographically challenged as we as we are, you know, it would be great to bring it up to the common. That would uh, be cool. You know, but that's just too much for walkers. It's too much strain yeah. on vehicles. It's just you know logistically a nightmare. Right. So you know the parade route will will forever be that route, uh, unless about somehow two miles, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just under two miles. Okay. Um, you know, it's not it's not a bad walk. No, it's not. Uh, you know, and actually, uh, as soon as you turn on Wind Street, it's nice and shady. You get a lot of shade on Wind. Yeah, absolutely. It. So, it is. It's a. It's it's a pretty good route. Okay. Low impact to traffic as well. I think when you think about, okay. you know, the the town overall, uh, because we close roads down, right. right, so that we can have the parade along that route. How do you determine when the roads get closed? So it's. Um, we, we take our cues from the Burlington Police Department. Okay. Um, they close down the uh, Wilmington Road and uh, Cambridge Street intersection early. Right. Um, I think it's around 9 a.m. Okay, because that's where everybody's like lining up. Because that's when we up. start staging, right? And so we need to start kind of taking over the road at that point. Yeah. Um, you know, because we can't fit everyone into the Presbyterian parking lot. So we not to, comfortably, not no. comfortably, no. Because <laughs> it's very, very difficult. It's a very because you also get people like me going, "Where am I supposed to go?" It's a very, it's a very unfriendly game of Tetris. Um, and so you know, we we need three A at that point 
Um, and then by, I think it's 1030, the majority of the, the access to uh, Cambridge Street and Wind Street are closed down, okay. uh, you know, for safety reasons. And, uh, and then, yeah. You know, but Burlington's also nice because there's a lot of little side streets that you can are. still get from point A to point B. And, and that's the beautiful thing about the route, right? Is that yeah. folks, folks can get from Wilmington over to Woburn or, you know, the south, south end of Burlington while the parade's going on, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, you know, middle impact to traffic, uh, which is nice. So on the opposite end, you know, I just sitting here realized, so we have to close the roads to stage the parade over by the Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. When does the road reopen? When the last group leaves or do you wait until like the last group turns on to win? Or that's a, that's do you a just great question. kind of wait and, you know, just something magic happens and We'll go with magic. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's um, again, it's it's up to the the Burlington Police Department as to you know they they let the parade get down the road a good ways, uh, okay. and you, at least folks early in the parade will notice that you know there's the tail end of the parade, mm -hmm. right? Typically followed by a cruiser. Okay. Uh, and that cruiser is typically the detail that was at the that at that. Starting the road intersection, oh, okay. um, and then behind them will be the line of traffic of folks <laughs> who forgot that the parade was happening exactly. and are now stuck in parade traffic. Okay, um, I get it. You know, but uh, but yeah. We also mentioned the lineup. Mm -hmm. How early does that start, or how do you? How do you determine it? I mean, we talked about, you know, making sure the bands aren't lined up, but how do you determine, like, who's the first band and who's the last band? Yeah. Um, so sometimes it comes down to where the, the performers are coming from or going to. Okay. Right? So and they let you know that far enough in advance? Know. Yep. So, okay. so let's say, uh, you know, uh, Waltham Legion Band, right? They, okay. They always come and perform for us. Let's say they have to get back on the highway because they've got a you know two o'clock parade to get to. Okay. Right. We make sure that they are closer to the front. That way they can get through the parade, get on the highway, and get to where they need to be. Okay. Right. Before those uh, roads close. <laughs> if if somebody's <laughs> coming from another parade. Okay. Right. Then we put them in the back half. Right. Oh, uh, okay. So you know. Yeah, we, but the roads close. How do they get? No. No. Yeah. No. They get special passes. Uh, uh -huh. You know, and so it's 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 that kind of you know weaving of uh, of things that okay. kind of helps us, you know, figure out where the the, the placement kind of winds up. Like you mentioned, it's an artistry. It's a it's a bit of an artistry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, we we typically start staging, you know, around eight thirty nine in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, and then as folks roll in, uh, literally or figuratively. Uh, we I get it. Yeah. <laughs> we we have folks, you know, positioning groups. So we typically have four uh, groupings okay. that we can try to break it into, and it helps mm -hmm. at least get people into a general area, okay. right? So we're like, okay, yeah. Cool. The last couple of years have been so smooth. Yeah, we really kind of got it down to a science at this point, you where do. we get folks up, you know, towards the car wash, mm -hmm. and folks that are, you know, uh, toward the back half wind up. You know more than like part one's here, yeah, part two's we here. Use, we use part both sides three, yeah. of the street, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, that's and it just awesome. it, it really starts to help to coordinate everything. It makes things a lot easier. Yeah, um, you know, as we as we group folks, get them moved. Um, you know, folks who are walking, mm -hmm. um, you know, can leave their cars at uh, Memorial or the Legion, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, Representative Ken Gordon uh, brings a bus to the parade that beforehand. He helps us get folks from, from the, end the end back, back to the front. To the front. Uh, so yeah. that way folks can leave their cars there, get down to the start. So they don't have to walk twice. Exactly. Thank yeah. You. I mean, could you imagine how awful the end of the parade would be if we had to constantly be busing folks oh, back to the start gosh, to, yeah. to get their stuff? Um, so it's it's all these it's all these cogs in the system mm -hmm. that help to make it, you know, a very efficient process. Exactly. Uh, so okay. everyone can enjoy themselves, right? I mean you know, people who are in the parade, and I know that you've experienced this, right? 
uh, we have a great time. Oh yeah, it's right. Like I, I love walking in the parade. I think it's a it's a hoot and a half, and it's not <laughs> it's not an arduous half. experience, right? Uh, oh, while while I'm walking in the parade, I'm not worried about what's happening, right? Because everything is keyed up and ready to roll, right? You know, and at that point. Uh, you know, because the select it is board, what it is. Yeah, right. You, you know, have it's to, just you know. about making sure that, that those groups get out. You know, so the select board winds up in like group two, right? Which mm -hmm. means I'm walking away before groups three and four, you know, leave the gate. Uh, but you know, we have volunteers who are there right. who make sure okay. that groups three and four get off okay, and they're already in line and ready to go. So it's just a matter of making sure that the person goes, okay, go. you're following them. Go ahead and, and gear up, and yep. we'll see you at the end. And I think a lot of it too, as you're, as you're talking, it's like, because a lot of the groups have already done it before, they kind of know the process. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, we'll just follow them and, Absolutely. you know, because the signage is really good too. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, they're group three, I'm in group four, they left, and we I love, guess it's my turn. We love returning folks, right? Um, because, because you, and I can say this to you specifically, uh -oh. are reliable <laughs> and an absolute pleasure to have in the parade. It's a blast. So, you know, we, we, we have our we have our reliable returners, right? And you know, every year we're on the on the lookout for uh, the next and I was the next edition. Just about to ask you if there's anything new and exciting coming up this year. Unfortunately, this year nothing new. New, okay. We've got just about all of our returners. Excellent. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, the pandemic took a took a real beating on yeah. a lot of folks. Okay. You know, so uh, in years past, we would have Beverly's um, ROTC, right? Oh. And they would come. Yeah. And and they were, I mean, they did amazing. the whole amazing. They did the whole yeah. routine. They even had this, um, you know, the, this like almost like stomp type. You know, like it, it, yeah, you know, performance I they remember would do, I mean, that. Just absolutely, just people would rave about it, right? We had uh, Hanscom's uh, Civil Air Patrol, oh, and we yep, had okay. Hanscom's Color Guard. Uh, so those are three groups that took a huge hit with the pandemic in terms of um, you know people who were part of the program, people who were in charge and leading the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and we've we've stayed in touch with folks. I was I'm like not to put you on the spot, but have you maintained communication? Yep. So yeah, if so last and year, when they rebuild, last year was a huge year for me in terms of you know figuring out who was now in charge, and again like the folks who were in charge who were no longer in charge were super great about getting us you know in touch with the people who now. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, because that's we stayed in contact, uh, but you know even this year they're still not back up to where they want to be. Okay. Um, and so, you know, they can't commit to those kinds of things, okay. which is which is tough. Um, you know, but, um, you know, the Shriners and Waltham and Dedham Legion Bands and Clan McPherson and uh, the, the, the Patriots. Batmobile. Is uh, the Batmobile I, coming back? We'll, we'll see. The Batmobile oh. we haven't seen in a few years. Okay. Uh, and so I won't, I won't promise anything. Oh, uh, um, okay. But we, we are, we have been talking a lot with the classic car folks. Oh, uh, everyone okay. loves the, the classic cars are such a, oh, everyone loves seeing the cars. You know? Yeah, pre-pandemic, they always hung out like by Schoolhouse Ice Cream yeah, and Pizza yeah. Works like and every Sunday. And and I'm, I'm pretty sure they still do. Okay. And on I the, don't get out on much. On the nice so. weather days, <laughs> you know, so. Is it too late for somebody to participate in the parade? In my opinion, it's never too late for somebody to partic participate in the parade. And the reason I say that is this. Will they be absolutely in the program? No. Probably not, right? But that, that doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Okay. We will find a way to get folks credit. Um, I would rather someone say, yes, we're coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in fact, this year, a couple of the uh, nonprofits in town are banding together to be in the program. Oh, cool. So we've got like the Mama Bear Effect and people helping people. Uh, oh, okay. You know, and they're trying to get other. You I've know, seen Mama Bear Effect saying, "Hey, you want to be in the parade?" Yeah, you okay. know, they're, so, they're, so they're trying to work together, which is fantastic, um, and that's the kind of camaraderie we want to see. Okay, you know, as we as we look forward, I'd love to see the elementary school PTOs. Oh, uh, that'd know, be cool. Back in the back in the you know swing of things, uh, 
You know, I remember, you know, when the parade, you know, when, when we were kids and, you know, heading into the end of the year, mm -hmm. right, if the PTO was putting a, a float in, right, the kids would contribute in some way, right? Oh, yeah, and then you'd show up fun. to the parade and there goes your, your float and your there's, there's your handprint or there's the thing yeah. you did or whatever it was. And, you know, it's, it's those kinds of things that are a blast. Uh, Mike Runyon's talked about, and I love this idea, doing a, uh, a bike and stroller decorating competition. Ooh. Right? Now, somehow, right when you say that, I kind of remember, not part of the parade, but the concert on the common, right in front of um, Town Hall, there mm -hmm. was like a, a bike parade or yes. something, many yes. years ago. Many years ago. But as yes. part of the parade? As part of the parade. <gasps> Cool. So, so That's not happening this year, though, is not it? Not happening this year. Okay. So for anyone who winds up seeing this, I strongly suggest that you reach out to me if you do want to decorate a bike or a stroller. Uh, but, you know, again, like, have the kids ride in the parade, right? Have folks okay. push the strollers, you know, and then at a certain point, you know, whether it's the Legion or wherever mm -hmm. else, we, you know, we, we have the, the judges there with, with BCAT, you know, oh. and do a quick little judging yeah. and, you know, reward them with, you know, a prize, you know, however we decide to do it. Uh, but again, like, you know, when when someone you know is in the parade, you are more likely to go to the parade. That's true. Right? Yeah. And, you know. Come see me in the parade. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, my my whole family, I mean, I had, one of my brothers lives in New Hampshire. Him and his fiance come down to the parade. You know, my parents come. Uh, you know, our friends, you know, from town, sometimes from out of town, <laughs> you know, will come. Uh, because it's so much fun yeah. you know, to, to not only enjoy the parade because it's a parade, right. but to see people you know in the parade, oh, right? Yeah. Because you're fostering that sense of community. And it's also cool, like on the reverse end, to like I remember, hey, wait, I know you, hi. Yes. Yeah. The, so the, the first year I walked in the parade, I, I, it was 2019, uh, we got onto Wind Street and uh, friends of mine uh, uh, grew up on Wind Street. And so as we were passing their house, mm -hmm. them and another friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a long time and, uh, and, and their mom, you know, were all out front. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I ran over <laughs> and I gave them all big hugs, oh, go. you know, and then, yeah, and then, you know, like you chat for 15 seconds and then, mm -hmm. you know, I had to run back, you know, to catch up. Uh, but you know, like it's so much fun, and you see people that maybe you haven't seen in months or a year exactly. or whatever it is, and you can wave, and you know, it's. I mean, again, it, it fosters that sense of community, right? Yeah. That we're all in this together because we are. When you were mentioning like seeing people, you know, a few years ago, my son was actually with the Cub Scouts, mm. and the Cub Scouts were handing ca handing out candy along the way, and my son saw one of his classmates. And there were a whole bunch of kids around him. He says, no, this candy is for my friend. And made sure that that kid got the candy. And the mom was like so impressed with that. She's like, oh. <laughs> you know, I think they were like in second grade or something, but it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Also in the parade, um, in the past, and again, I'm not sure if you're doing this this year, but there's, usually a parade marshal. Yes. What exactly, or who exactly, is? what's the role of a parade marshal? So we have we have our grand marshal. Okay, sorry, have, grand marshal. That's okay. And we have what's called our outstanding citizen. Okay. And we we have it both ways uh, because um, the, the American Legion will pick the grand marshal. Okay. Um, and it's usually a service member. Okay, I was gonna say there's gotta be like a military Absolutely. connection. Absolutely. Okay. And then um, we, as a committee, will vote on an outstanding citizen. Okay. And, and you know, I mean, it, it becomes very um, emblematic, right? Okay. The, the, the roles they, you know, uh, ride, you know, and get to wave to everybody and be acknowledged. Yeah, the, uh, you know. The royal wave. The royal wave, right? Yeah, everyone should practice their, wo their, their royal wave. It's from the elbow, not the yes. wrist. Uh, and uh, palm has to face in. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Well, okay. Your, I mean, yours is good. I love <laughs> that. Um, you know, and you know, it's it, it's it's a it's a moment to acknowledge uh, two things. It's okay. important to acknowledge um, 
that again because this is a community event mm -hmm. that to acknowledge somebody who has been uh, a um, influential member of our community okay um, is very important and then also to acknowledge a service member because we should not ever forget that we while are having a fun parade mm -hmm. are doing so on our Independence Day right and okay. the point of that uh, you know and to truly not forget the uh, patriotic acts that did occur and continue to occur through our service members so it's um, it's important that we acknowledge both okay with the Grand Marshal you did say the American Legion selects that person is there like an application or nomination process either through the Veterans Administration or just the American Legion itself due to the nature of the organization that they say, oh, we think this person's going to be a great Grand Marshal? I think so, yeah. Okay. I actually haven't had much insight into that, that side of it. Okay. Um, but I'm fairly certain that, yes, they, they, they talk about it and, you know, folks are nominated and then they have to sit down and think about, you know, of the nominees, you know, who, okay. who would be uh, the person for, for that particular year, right? Uh, similar to how we, we select the outstanding citizen. Because that was my next question. Yeah. Uh, so folks folks nominate uh, for outstanding citizen. They'll send emails. They'll make phone calls. Uh, you know, pre-pandemic, we would get letters, handwritten letters. Wow. Uh, from folks. You know, okay. we want you to you know, look at this person because of all the amazing things they do. And i, I got to be honest, the amount of nominations we get is not in short supply. Really? Uh, okay. There are a lot of folks. Well, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I have to acknowledge too that we have a lot of folks in Burlington who truly give a lot of themselves. That's absolutely true. And you know we are able to do a lot because of the people who do give a lot. Right. Um, and I mean of themselves, not. But a lot know. of times those people go unnoticed, so it's exactly you know, this it's, is a great moment to acknowledge them. Okay. Funny enough, the same people are also very humble. Okay. And we have actually been turned down. <gasps> really? By folks okay. Who you don't have to tell me. No names. No names. No names. No names. Uh, but you know, it, it shows the humility of folks who, you know, aren't doing it for acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. They're doing it because they believe it's the right thing to do to give back to their community, and that says a lot about a person's character. Yeah. And I wish that we were able to acknowledge them. Anyway. And yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Be like, well, you know, tough nuggies. You're, yeah. you're you're the person. And okay. Just, you don't have you to know. march in the parade, but we're gonna have a big sign. Yeah. Just do a cardboard cutout in their place. <laughs> you know. Oh my uh, gosh, you know? You know, <laughs> but I mean, of course, you know, we, we wouldn't go against their wishes, but, um, you know, it's, it's a very unique thing to see. And so uh, it makes the selection process that much more difficult. Okay. Because we find ourselves saying, okay, well, that person said thanks, but no thanks. Uh, you know, on to the next one, I guess. Ooh, okay. And, you know, then we have to have a, a discussion about it, so. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know we talked about before, before we started recording that you currently have not named either of those roles. Mm -hmm. How far in advance or how close to the parade? What is the timeline for identifying either of those roles? Um, ASAP in this case. Okay. Uh, we like to have the, the people selected no more than, or I should say no less, than two weeks from the parade. Okay. Um, and that's because as we're putting together the program, as right. we're updating the website, we want to make sure that there's more acknowledgement as folks are searching us digitally. Okay. Um, and so, you know, as they hit there, they're like, oh, this is this year's Grand Marshal, this is this year's Outstanding Citizen. Um, and it gives, you know, the the selected folks a little more opportunity to have, you know, okay. that acknowledgement and recognition. Right. Um, you know, because sometimes you miss in the parade, right? Things are going by, you're like, hey, who's that person waving on that car? Right, um, okay. You know, and, and you don't catch it. So to be able to have it up there at least two weeks prior gives folks the opportunity as they're looking at the, the program or they're looking at the parade route. Okay. Are there gonna be fireworks this year? No. Oh, okay. No. It's a, it's a very short and simple answer. Um, well, yeah, no, it's two letters. Two yeah. letters, yeah, a little period at the end. Because <laughs> uh, no is a complete sentence. Uh, oh my gosh, I have that quote on my desk at work. Do you? Yes. Yeah, it's, um, a, okay. it's, it's important. I digress. <laughs> no, uh, so we, we don't because it's expensive, right? Right. Talking supply and demand, um, you're talking the hottest day of the year in terms of uh, the demand for fireworks, right? right? Um, a lot of dollars 
go right. out of that. You know, the um, decimal point moves to places keeps, to the right as you get closer. Moving. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and you need trained professionals. It's not do. just like you do need trained professionals. And oh, the DPW guys are gonna, you know. Right. No. Yeah. No. It's, you, 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 <laughs> you need, need professionals who are licensed yeah. and have insurance and you know have the fire marshal there to make sure there are no you know accidents and um, you know that that now comes at a premium. Um, and so, you know, we've sort of made a decision as a committee to say we should be focusing on the parade. Okay. Right? Um, because I kid you not when I say the fireworks double the overall expenditure oh, I believe to it. the day, right? Um, so we focus on the parade, right? We focus on making the parade stronger, right? If a time comes where mm -hmm. we are able to raise enough money through sponsors and donations, mm -hmm. um, you know, we will consider bringing the fireworks back. Okay. Um, we just want to make sure that we are spending the dollars that we have as wisely as possible. Exactly. Now, we talked about the performers in the parade needing to get lined up like a year or more in advance. Mm -hmm. If and when the fireworks come back, how far in advance do you have to book the professionals? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so according to the vendor who we had been using, we could start contacting them in December heading into the next year. Oh, okay, so roughly um, six months in advance. But that does not guarantee us a July 4th date. Right. So I think that to secure a July 4th date, we would have to be a consistent customer for a few years to build back reputation. Right. Um, okay. At which point, and we you got to work say, your way up the food chain. Exactly. You know, we could say, "Hey, you know, we, we'd like to vie for a spot on the coveted July Fourth date." Mm -hmm. um, you know, otherwise, and we'll move the decimal point three <laughs> places over. <laughs> I hope. I hope not. No, I'm uh, just. You but know. yes, yes, it's. I'm just know. saying. You know, the date is so important it is. that you yeah. know, law of supply and demand. Absolutely. You know, and then there's always the, the the potential that if we bring back the fireworks and we're in a strong enough position. You know that you know we surround the fourth with more activities, mm -hmm. right? We look at Wilmington, right, and their focus is their carnival. It's it is, like the whole weekend. That's it's right. Like it's, two, it's, three it's, days? it's a whole week exactly. It's, a, it's like two and a half days. They put on an entire schedule, wow. right, of things that are going on, and special events that are only happening on some of those days, and you know that is. I'm afraid to go over there because it's so. You know, it, it just seems so big. Yeah, you know they've they've really brought it together and focused their effort, mm -hmm. right. Um, you know, but I mean, if we wanted to say, uh, you know, always have the fireworks on July 1st. Okay. Right? And that became our day. And then leading into the 4th, we had an event or two, right? Okay. Or we had something. And we, we created an experience from July 1st to July 4th, right? Okay. Uh, that could be a possible route, right? I commit to nothing at this point. No, uh, no. But, you know, we I can mean, dream. Absolutely. As, as you I'm think of these things, you yeah. know, you, you have to say to yourself, what are our avenues of, of potential? Right. But I'm also thinking, like, the first to the fourth would be cool if it's, like, a Friday to Monday. But if right. it's, like, a Monday to Thursday. Tough. It gets tough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't really change the, you know, well, look, I mean, change look the at, calendar. Look at this year, right? We we land the fourth on a Tuesday. Right. Um, you know, so not everyone's going to have the third off. Right. Right. Um, but I think, you know, depending on... Where it lands, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's how we we decide to pivot. Okay. Will there be any events on the common on the fourth? Not this year. Okay. No. Because I know, like in past years, I don't know if you've partnered with the Parks and Rec Department to have, you know, a concert or or something. Yeah, I think on. I don't. They they might be doing something like on the common. The weekend before, the weekend after. Um, but I, don't I have think not memorized my my calendar, my yeah. catalog yet. They were they were just before the select board uh, two meetings ago okay. to have their summer schedule approved, um, and I, I can't recall. There was an early July date in there, okay. uh, but it's 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 not coordinated with us. Okay. What happens if it rains? We still have the parade. Rain or shine. Okay. If you were to give advice to somebody who wants to watch the parade, mm -hmm. 
what advice would you give them? Like where to go, when to go, how long to stay, what to bring, what not to bring? Yeah. Um, so the parade starts promptly at 11 a.m. So I suggest watches. that at around 4 a.m. you go and get a chair. <laughs> you, I've actually seen that. And you bring, I, I well, have at least two. 8 o'clock. I yeah. don't know about 4 a.m. There are, there are folks who are very committed to their spot on the route, and they take their, uh, you know, 1972, uh, you know, vinyl uh, folding chair. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised they still have it. They look in fantastic condition. <laughs> I've seen. Uh, and, they, and they get out there early. I mean, 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Right, like wow. I, I run out to grab coffee or to do something, and there they are. And sometimes they put up those the pop up they canopies. Put up pop -up canopies. To yes, people are very protect. committed. Okay. Um, I would say that if you are on the parade route and you want a good spot, it depends on what you want. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you are anywhere between the beginning of the parade, uh, so you know just past the car wash. Okay. Uh, down to the intersection of Cambridge and Wynn. Okay. Uh, you're gonna want sunscreen or head protection okay. and water if it's going to be a hot day. Yes. Because there's less tree covers there, mm -hmm. a lot more sun, it's very open, um, and so we always advise folks to you know come prepared during the hot days. Okay. Right? Um, if you are anywhere from when on down okay. to the Legion, you're mostly in shade. That's true. Which is, which is great, right? Uh, you should still be drinking water. Oh, right. absolutely. Uh, you know, and you should probably still be wearing sunscreen. But, you know, a hat will suffice mm -hmm. a lot more than if you're standing out in the, in the direct sun. Right. And then just past, uh, you know, where uh, wind Where well, the power lines on, are, yeah, yeah. just past the power lines, the, the shade starts to wear off a bit, and you're kind of mm -hmm. back to full sun in the, at the back half. Um, in my experience as a walker in the parade, the most crowded areas are... Um, CVS? The CVS area up through the intersection of Cambridge and Wynn, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that first, as you first turn on the Wynn Street, as yep. it can be a huge, huge cluster of folks. And then, um, you know. Memorial, right in front of Memorial. Memorial gets huge, mm. packed. So. Well, they also have a lot of trees, too. They do have a lot of trees, so, so folks, again, are seeking shade. Um, you know, but it, it also depends on where you live, right? True. Um, you know, and, and where you, where you kind of want to drop your car or mm -hmm. how you're going to get there and all those kinds of things. So, you know, come prepared, right? Okay. Rain or shine. So bring your ponchos and your umbrellas and your pop-up tents if it's going to rain. Bring your pop-up tents and your umbrellas and your sunscreen and water if it's going to be sunny. Um, you know, bring your chairs, right? Okay. Uh, the road closes at 10, I think. Okay, if I think so. If correctly. Uh, and so we advise folks to get to where you need to be by 10. Mm -hmm. Right, because we really don't want cars your claim. coming through, you know, no. the, the, the lineup. Don't want to hit the guys on the stilts because, you know, they right. have a long way to fall. Exactly. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> they're it's, like it's 20 not, feet tall. Yeah, they, they are. They're, they're at least 12 feet tall. I mean, they're, they're up there. They're, they're up there, yeah. Um, you know, so, so get there early. Be prepared. Uh, you know, we have uh, the, the little, uh, you know, ATV go-kart, uh, yeah. okay. you know, with uh, waters and you know, um, uh, a first aid kit, right? And then we usually have uh, one or two stations where our uh, fire EMS, uh, you know, are stationed. God forbid somebody goes down for some reason. Okay. Along the route for safety reasons. Um, you know, so when you get to where you're gonna be, stake out who's around you, right? Okay. Uh, we've got a couple, you know, police details along the route. It's always good to know where that police detail is. Heaven forbid something happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want quick access to first responders. Um, but we have that, you know, car going up and down, making sure that walkers have water, making sure folks on the sidelines aren't going down. I was going to ask about the people actually in the parade, yeah. if there's any safety measures in place to make sure that they're okay. Yeah, we we definitely try to make sure that folks have water and aren't dehydrating, uh, okay. no heat or sunstroke, those kinds of things. Um, you know, we do ask uh, folks who are going to be on uh, larger flows to sign waivers, um, you know, because you are, in a sense, taking safety into your own hands. So mm -hmm. at a certain point, we do the best we can, but, uh, you know, we don't want to, you know, cause any 
intentional accident. Yeah, just like safety <laughs> waiver, don't do anything stupid. Right, I mean, you you know? Know, honestly, it comes out of common sense, right? Well, yeah. You're in a moving vehicle, try to stay seated, yeah. right? Um, you know, have, have safety precautions, but um, the, the goal is everyone has fun. With the um, safety measures and the, fire, the, the EMS, mm -hmm. Is there, other than cell phones, is there like a radio communication system to help facilitate communication among all of these staff? Mm. We, we used to use walkies. Okay. Uh, and now we just use cell phones. Okay. Um, Probably a lot it's, easier. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty quick. We, we have them on us. Uh, you keep group your, text keep your set up in on. advance. Group text, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, you know, again, because the route isn't it's, it's just under two miles, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that go kart can get up and down it multiple times during the walk, okay. and you know um, everyone does a really good job of communicating what they need. So excellent. Yeah. Okay, we do have like about two minutes left. If you had unlimited budget, money is no object. What would you like to see for the parade? Wow. I'm not saying it's going to happen because I do not have that money tree in my backyard. No, there's no duffel bag of money hiding around here somewhere. No, uh, no, the the uh, <laughs> the woodchuck ate my tree bush, uh, my my money bush. That's how it goes. I know. Um, I gotta be honest. There are there are probably some like large scale performances I'd love to see, right? Like big marching band type stuff. How do you find them? You'd be surprised. I mean, with the internet, it's easy to find a lot of That's stuff these true. days, right? Um, you know, I'd like to do more of that, but I gotta be completely honest with you. The thing that I want most in the parade, it's not about the money, it's about the community. Okay. I want to see more community floats. Love to see neighborhood floats, and school floats, and the school marching band, and okay. those kinds of things. And I'd be happy to put dollars toward making sure those things can happen, but that's what I want to see. I don't want to have to pay the world to come to Burlington. Burlington can put this parade on. I like and that. And that's what I want to see. So right. if I had all the money in the world and I could build the floats and just, you know, give everyone 10 bucks and say, get on the floats and have a great time, then, rent, then you know, that's rent what I would do. Rent trailers or rent yeah, flat beds. That's what I would do. I would, I would take the logistics out of the equation. Right, but I really want to see the people of Burlington start to start, start to embrace and support this parade in ways more than just coming to the parade. Okay. Right. So that's that's my twist your on your question. Okay. <laughs> no, fair enough. So, but I do want to thank you for coming. We are just about out of time. Oh, Linda, thank you. I love coming so, to, to your show. Love having you come. Thank you. That was fun. Um, all the dad jokes. And right. No. Yeah. Um, but I am looking forward to the parade. Yes. I do need to uh, somehow find, go through my garage and see what's usable from prior <laughs> years. And then, you know, enhance yes. my float. Absolutely. And don't know if you remember, but we do record a show along the, the parade float. route. Yes, yes. So Chris Flaherty is my co-host and basically we talk about whatever comes our way <laughs> and we try talking to the people on the sidelines, but you know, as the camera goes away, we lose our microphone signal. Right. So we kind of have to work on that. Yeah. But thank you so much thank for you. joining me. We'll pencil you in for next year. Absolutely. I'm a hot commodity and these you, days. Oh, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to the parade. And I also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in. Uh, make sure to get your spot along the parade route. If you don't, get those neighbors and friends together to make your own float and become part of the Burlington Celebrates the Fourth. Yes. Have a great evening. I'll see you around town. Good night.